Hey guys, welcome to Waypoint X Wednesdays. My name is Judd, and today's topic is all about the 3-8 versus the 3-6. So you better stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Like I said, my name is Judd. This is Waypoint X Wednesdays, an off-road podcast. And we really do appreciate that you've tuned in this week. So if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, leave us a like, leave us a comment, hit that bell for all notifications. And if you're over on Spotify, make sure you hit that follow button. That way you keep up to date with what's going on within Waypoint X, and that way you don't miss a video or a podcast. So guys, we really do appreciate all the support. Today's question or podcast is from a listener. Uh, Name is Jordan. And so we really do appreciate him emailing us in. He also sent me a message on Facebook about uh, this particular question he had. And it's all about the 3-8 versus 3-6. And he has about five questions or so. And I'm so I'm going to read a little bit of, of the email. And uh, we're going to go into the five questions. And so if you don't have a JK and, you know, you do have a TJ or LJ or JL, et cetera, Wait until the end because the questions do get uh, better and they start talking about those things. So keep listening. So let me go into the email. He says, uh, I have an 08 and I've considered selling it for a 3.6. I also have a tow rig, so the Jeep is not my daily, but I think with 145,000 miles on the Jeep, I will have to start working on it some. I also have a few things I need to upgrade, so trying to decide before I dive into that. Here are a few questions that you could that I could answer to help make his decision easier. So he's just wanting my opinion. We actually talked on the phone a few days ago and talked through all these questions uh, before we uh, you know did the podcast and just try to get uh, you know some more insight to it. Um, but let's just go dive straight into the, his questions and kind of see uh, where his mind is at. And I think you know as we answer these questions, it might help you, uh, the listener, to kind of make the best decision for yourself. When, uh, I want to, you know, preface this by saying that it depends on, you know, where your build is currently, uh, what are the plans for your build, and what does the future hold. So um, let's dive right into these questions. So number one is, what would you buy if you were starting from scratch? And so for me, I like the 3.8. I know that's a controversial issue. Um, three eights had their problems, just like the three sixes do, just like any other motor out there. Um, I know the TJ, the four O's, you know, they did well, but the three eight hasn't given me any issues. And, uh, going back to some of our older podcasts talking about maintenance, I really think it, it matters whether it was your Jeep or somebody else's Jeep beforehand, how it was maintenance, uh, was it maintenance, you know, well, you know, where the, was it on timely schedule, things of that nature. And so I don't have a problem with the 3.8. And so I would probably go back with a 3.8 just because that's what I'm used to. Know how to work on it. Um, and so for me, I like the 3.8. Now, I'm not saying the 3.6 is bad. I, my father-in-law has one. Um, our buddy Scott has one. And so I've driven their 3.6s out on the trail, and it's definitely got more pep to its step. And so it's a little bit... Um, nicer to drive, you know, and so I feel like I'm in a Ferrari (laughs) versus, you know, old beat up car or van because it it is a van motor. And so in my opinion, I like the 3.8. And so they are a little bit cheaper than the 3.6. Granted, you know, one does have a lot of miles. It's just my personal preference. I like the 3.8 just because I know how to work on them um, better, if that makes sense. I'm not against the 3.6 at all. I just know the 3.8. And so... It's a personal preference. I will say the 3.6, like I said, it does have more power. So if you need more wheel speed, um, if you're in that part of the country that needs it, it does help. um, But they all have their issues because the 3.6 does have, you know, the ticking, you know, time bomb, as it were, because they usually all start ticking eventually or head gaskets or you name it. Some some there's a problem with no matter what motor you have. It's just um, I'm I bought the 3.8 and I kind of like it. So uh, just my opinion. Next, he said, "Would you, what would you buy if you were getting into wheeling right off the get-go? And so I said a JK. Um, and th- he goes into saying, uh, we'll wait to the last question to talk about the JL and some other vehicles. But I would I- I'd honestly get a JK. Whether it's a 3.6 or 3.8, I don't think you can go wrong. Um, the 3.6 obviously has a little bit better aftermarket support, things of that nature, in my opinion. 
I don't, but I don't think you're going wrong with either one. Do is it a motor that is going to last you forever? Absolutely not. I will say on my um, 09 JK, I have I think Caitlin like almost 190 thousand. It might be like it's between 185 I think and 190. And so I've had it since 33,000 miles. That's when I bought it. Bought it off a used car lot. And so I've had it that long. Um, never had any motor issues. I mean, I had a leaky oil pan, you know, gasket, stuff like that, things of that nature. I might have had a head gasket at one point that we swapped. I can't remember. But I really haven't had any issues with that motor um, besides overheating issues, things of that nature. They all can overheat, um, especially when you're running one tons and 40s and things of that nature. The only problem I really have is if we go to like Wind Rock or we're down in the canyon in Texas, we have a problem getting up out and sometimes not overheating or, you know, the temperature gauge starts to want to creep up there. Not necessarily overheating, but, you know, starting to starting to rise there just a little bit and transmission temps and things of that nature, even in four low. And so, you know, it just, it's just kind of dependent on what you want. I'm happy with a 3.8. But I will say I wish I had more power in certain instances. I will say this, that uh, the two-to-one transfer case, because mine is a sport, I can get away with a little bit more because uh, I have people who ride with me all the time that say I go really fast sometimes down the trail because I'm two-to-one and everybody's in four-to-one. And so uh, I'm just going a little bit faster just because I don't have that gear ratio in my transfer case. But if I were getting into wheeling, I would buy a JKU four-door because of the length, and it doesn't really matter what year. Just pick a year, pick what you like, pick what's in your price range, and go for it. But in my opinion, if I'm just out there going to wheel, I'm picking a JK. Next question. Sorry, I rambled just a little bit on that one. Um, have you thought about selling yours for a 3.6? No. Um, first thing is my Jeep it has too much sentimental value at this point. I mean, my wife and I basically built it the way it is, and travel the country in it. Um, I will never get rid of that Jeep. Uh, price is, you know, there's no money that can buy that Jeep, unfortunately. So don't try. Um, I'm not going to sell it because it's just, it's almost like a family heirloom now, <laughs> in my opinion. And so I won't get rid of it. Uh, I've seen some people that want to do the 3.8, you know, 3.6 swap. So they have a 3.8, put a 3.6 in it. I think it's a waste of money, in my opinion. Just if, just go back with the 3.8. Or do LS or Hemi swap, but don't have a 3.8 and just put a 3.6 in it. I feel like you're just completely wasting your money. That's just my personal opinion. Um, so if you have a different opinion, sorry. But I just think if you're going from a 3.8 to 3.6 just for a motor swap, that's just me. Now, I will say this. If you do have a 3.8 and it, let's say it's not very modified and you don't have a lot of money invested, uh, invested in it, and you're not, you know, it's not something that you just have to hold on to. And you just want that 3.6. Yeah, absolutely. Go get the 3.6 if that's what you want. But I'm not going to try to sway you one way or the other. Just don't do a, you know, a 3.8 for a 3.6 motor swap. It's just not worth it in my opinion. Number four, if yours was lightly modified, would you take everything off, off of it to put on the new one? And I think it would matter where in the build that that was. You know, because sometimes it can sell for more depending on the parts that are on it. And I know that varies and, you know, there is some skepticism about that. You know, sometimes they're like, oh, well, parts don't really matter. Well, in the Jeep world, I think they do. Um, better parts on a Jeep. In my mind, when I'm go if I'm going to buy a Jeep, I'm looking at those components because I don't want to have to replace all those components, especially if they welded something on or they have like a long arm kit on there or things of that nature. How was it taken care of? And so um, if it's lightly modified, I mean, it just depends on where you are on the build. Do you really have like sentimental value to those parts? Because, you know, you might just keep them on there, sell the Jeep for more, and then you can just turn around and buy your next Jeep and actually put on better parts than you put on your last Jeep. And so it's time to upgrade. So I guess it would just depend on the parts. Um, you know, it's a lot of hassle to try to put one back to stock or form that you want it. And so I just, in my opinion, it's not worth it. 
Um, maybe, you know, if you had B locks or something on there and you just wanted to save some money and put some stock t- uh, stock rims and tires on it, maybe that. But I don't know if I'd go through the the headache of doing bumpers and winches and lift kits and things of that nature. I just, I don't think that's worth it in my opinion. So I probably wouldn't. And then the last question is probably going to be the longest question is, would you stay with a JK slash JKU or go to the new JL slash JLU? And then uh, there's a second half to that question, but let me answer the first half. I would stick with a JK. Um, In my opinion, out there wheeling with different groups of people, I've seen more problems with the JL because of uh, computer problems than anything else. And so just this past weekend I was wheeling, or a couple weekends ago I was was wheeling with some people, and the JKs had some issues with some uh, codes that came up, and the JLs did too. The JK was most part, now not all the time, Um, But majority of the time, the JK let me delete all of the codes that were there and reset them. The JL wouldn't even let me touch them. And so it wouldn't, it didn't matter if I tried to delete the codes or not, they still showed up. And so we could never figure that out. And so that was an issue. And it, it just seems like they always got computer problems. I know a buddy of ours had problems with his JL with uh, the secondary battery. I'm not too familiar with that motor battery configuration on the JLs. And so he had to swap out like both batteries and it ended up being the main battery. And basically his Jeep was just dead in the water. Nothing he could do until he took it to the dealership. And so that I have a problem with that. Um, especially if you're in the middle of the woods and you can't just put a reader on it and try to limp it along, um, because it won't even start. Um, so I just think there's less, there's less computer systems, in the JKs, in my opinion, especially the 3.8. And so I like the 3.8 just because it's simple. Um, same as like the LJs, TJs, things of that nature. They're just simple. And so that's why I like the 3.8 because they're just simple, easy to deal with. You kind of know what you got and you know the problem. And most of the time, they're especially the 3.8, is not going to go into limp mode or something crazy majority of the time. And so I know with the computer systems getting more high tech, it's just going to become more of a problem, especially out there willing. Now I'm not trying to discourage you from going off road. I'm just, you know, giving you some things to think about. Um, if you are purchasing a Jeep for the first time, um, I know there's all those creature comforts of the JL. Trust me. I like them. You know, you got the nicer seats, things of that nature. So I completely understand it. Just know that no matter what Jeep you get, whether it's a three, eight, you got the minivan motor or the 3.6, you possibly have the ticket problem, or JL, you got uh, electrical issues. You're going to have a problem no matter what eventually. It's just a matter of what do you want to deal with. Uh, and that goes with any vehicle. And so just because you think it's a Jeep, go ask Ford owners, you know, or go ask Toyota owners or go ask somebody else. They all have issues, so don't just think that it's a Jeep problem. Um, all vehicles have a problem somewhere down the line. And then the second part of that question, he said, or would you go with an LJ or TJ? The only reason I'm not a huge fan, trust me, I love an LJ. That is a absolutely love that Jeep. It's like the unicorn of Jeeps, in my opinion, because, you know, they only made it a couple years. And so I love the look of an LJ. I'm just not a big fan of two doors. They just sketch me out, in my opinion. Uh, You know, tipping and things of that nature. Um, I've never willed a two door. I just know when two-door gets on obstacles, it sketches you out. You know, a little pucker factor comes up. But then, you know, there are people who are die-hard TJ fans and LJ fans, and um, you can't get you can't talk them out of it. I know a good buddy of ours, Joe. He rides his TJ and absolutely loves it. And so, and he wills the crap out of it. And so, it's very impressive impressive to see him do that. But he won't he won't wheel anything else besides his TJ. So, you know, I think it's what you you get into. But for me, I would stay with the JK just because that's what I'm used to. I like the four door. I like the length of it. I know it's the mini, you know, it's the minivan or the school bus out there trying to turn around on trails and things of that nature. But I like it, and so it's it's all personal opinion. But I want to thank Jordan for reaching out. And I know a lo- I, I was talking to him on the phone, and I said, none of these answers that I'm giving you is probably going to answer your question because, you know, 
There's always a pro and a con to everything. And so I know this podcast might not have helped you with your decision, but maybe it gave you some things to think about because I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think it all boils down to where you are in your wheeling or off-road journey and where your build is. And so you, ha- you have, you, unfortunately, you have to decide that for yourself. I can't tell you which one to go buy. I like them all. It's a Jeep. We're going off road. We're enjoying, you know, nature and, you know, uh, all the cool things on this earth and, you know, throughout the States. And, you know, there's people going outside the United States to go see all this. And so I really think it's a cool thing, no matter what vehicle you're in. I just say, get one and go, um, and, you know, build it along the way. Kind of like what we did, you know, we started small and then now look at where our Jeep is at. So you just have to go through that progression. I don't think there's a right or wrong way of doing it necessarily. Yes, there's some probably wrong parts and things and wrong decisions you can make along the way. But as far as a Jeep is concerned, I think it all comes down to personal preference, what you want to do with it, what kind of trails you want to do with it, and what your end goal is. And so sorry if I didn't answer your questions or I didn't pick your favorite vehicle. Um, I just like the the JK38, unfortunately. Um, and a little side note is he did ask about, you know, the LS and Hemi swap, things of that nature. We have had that discussion. Caitlin and I have had that discussion many times, and I really think I'm going to put another three, eight in it. I really think that that's the move that we're going to make. I really don't need the power. I would like it. I'd like the sound of it, you know, it'd be great, but honestly, I've willed everywhere I want to will with that three, eight. And so maybe just a little bit of overheating or, you know, you know, the temperatures rising here or there. I really haven't had any issues out of it. Now, I will say this. I talked to Jordan on the phone about this. When I put that 3.8 in it, I will put a nice radiator in it and like an oversized fan and an oil oil cooler and things of that nature to try to help that 3.8 a little bit better. Um, But uh, I'll probably put another 3.8 in it. One, because of money. Um, A lot of money to invest in that. A lot of work. And that means a lot of downtime because I would probably, I'm going to most likely do the swap. So probably going back, going back with the three, eight, but that's just me. So, but like I told him, I said, it, it's all personal preference and what you want in your build. I don't down anybody for wanting to do that at all because it's a minivan motor. They don't have a lot of power, but like I said, I hope this answers some of your questions or sparks some more questions for you to make a better decision on what Jeep that you're going to buy or upgrade here in the future. And guys, if you have any questions about this topic or if you have questions about other topics, please send us an email. Put us put a comment in the comment section below. Um, you can send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we would love to talk with you about it and uh, possibly put it on the next podcast. So, guys, we really do appreciate all your time. I'm sorry I didn't answer your questions or pick your favorite Jeep, but, guys, we really do appreciate it. So hit that subscribe button, leave us a like, leave us a comment, hit that bell for all notifications, and if you're on Spotify, hit that follow button. But, guys, we really do appreciate it, and we hope to see you out on the trail.